Come belle c'è la luna, brille strette, strette, con un butto belle fasteggiando. Sotto il cielo di Roma, don't know what the country's coming to, but in Rome do as the Romans do. Will you? On an evening in Roma, sotto il cielo di Roma, on an evening in Roma. For the first time in this five minute travel series, I'm doing a city that doesn't seem like something from the future. In fact, pretty much the polar opposite. Rome is old. It was actually founded in 753 BC and is known as the Eternal City or Caput Mundi, meaning the capital of the world in Latin. This is the place that concrete was invented around 2100 years ago. The entire city feels like an open museum. The buildings are old, the roads are bumpy, and there are ruins everywhere. And I literally mean everywhere. The first thing we did when we landed was rent a scooter. Conveniently enough, it was the same exact scooter that we have back at home. It didn't take too long to realize that the roads were a bit outdated. Falling on this would destroy you. But then again, it wouldn't really feel like Rome if it were any different. We ended up in Altare de la Patria, a monument built in honor of Victor Emmanuel, the first king of a unified Italy. We walked to the top and despite the crazy scenery, everyone was focusing on this bird. We walked back down and got some pizza. A subscriber recommended going to this place called Santa Maria, so we went and holy shit. I don't even know how to explain this place. I mean, there are several rooms. Each is artistically decorated with real skeletons, literally. In total, there are about 3,000 bodies, and written in one of the rooms was, what you are now, we used to be. What we are now, you will be. That's so metal! Yeah! But in all honesty, I mean, it was pretty overwhelming. We left and grabbed the coffee. It started pouring, so we waited and waited and waited. It didn't stop, so we had to just drive back home and eat the rain. The next day, we went to the Trevi Fountain. Some of you may actually recognize this place from the movie La Dolce Vita. Apparently, about 3,000 euros are swept up from the bottom of the basin every night. The money is donated to Caritas, a Catholic charity who uses the money to provide services for needy families in Rome. At the moment, Rome has 280 fountains and 900 churches. We didn't really have the time or the energy to visit the remaining 279 fountains, but we did go to the nearby Torre de Argentina. AKA the place Julius Caesar was brutally stabbed to death. Despite his past, it's actually now a cat sanctuary. There's actually a law in Rome that allows cats to live without disruption in the place where they were born, which I think is pretty cool. We got hungry and ate again. In ancient Rome, it was common for people to vomit between meals so that they could eat more. <laughs> we didn't really do that, but we were happy to get a coffee. Which, by the way, tastes amazing, but it's very easy to get ripped off. Best coffee in the world. Many places ask for three, four, even five dollars for a standard cappuccino. So rule of thumb, if they ask you for more than a euro, go somewhere else. We were eating some sort of pasta or pizza literally every single day. We later walked through a nearby market that sold some very Italian products. There was pasta for days and when it comes to olive oil, these guys do not play games. We ended up not buying anything, we just left. Two things that stood out for me while driving down the streets of Rome is one, there are smart cars everywhere. And it's not uncommon to see them horizontally parked in a parallel parking space. Number two is the red lights are freaking huge. Look at these lights. They're so big. If I were in charge, I'd make the size of the fine proportion to the size of the red light. The bigger the light, the bigger the fine. For being an idiot. We made our way over to the Vatican which really isn't even Rome. It's actually a country, the world's smallest country, and the only one that still speaks Latin. You can walk your way around the entire thing in about 40 minutes. But despite its size, the Vatican has its own government, laws, police force, license plates, and prison. It's one of the few absolute monarchies remaining in the world, but the interesting thing is that the king and the pope are occupied by the same person. And while the king is hereditary, a pope involves an election process, which makes the Vatican the world's only elected, non-hereditary, absolute monarchy. If you'd like to know more about the Vatican, I provided a link in the description box below. Anyways, there was a pretty big line, but we eventually got into St. Peter's Basilica. It's the biggest church in the world by far, and you don't have to be religious to appreciate the work put into building this place. But obviously there were some very religious people here. We stayed for a few hours and headed back to Rome. We headed over to the Colosseum, and in case you didn't know, this place is one of the seven wonders of the world. And yeah, this is the place where the gladiator stuff you've seen on TV happened. But contrary to what you might have seen in Hollywood, they didn't always fight to the death. And at that time, gladiators were actually kind of like local celebrities. We headed out, got some gas, got ripped off, went to a park, and I stepped on the turd. <laughs> I tried getting it off and bumped into the handle of total perspective. It's a tree stump that offers you a handle to hold on as you blast through the universe. Because the Earth rotates around its own axis at 1,670 kilometers per hour, the Earth orbits around the Sun at 107,000 kilometers per hour, and our solar system revolves around the center of the Milky Way at 700,000 kilometers per hour. Vsauce actually illustrated this in one of his videos. Link is below. The Sun went down and we ended up in this cool little restaurant called Nibiru. This place lets you feast on their free vegetarian buffet if you order a cocktail. And you'd think that the cocktail 
hotels were really expensive, but actually almost all of them were under $10, so we didn't think twice about it. Both the food and the drinks were amazing, so I highly recommend this place, and the cocktails were different. Overall, Rome took me by surprise. If you can wrap your head around how much attention to detail and collective work has been put into Rome, it's pretty insane, especially considering the time period in which a lot of this stuff was done. The fact that they preserved their past, including their roads, make the city unique. The round trip from Barcelona to Rome cost us $51 per person, and just about everything from transport to food is pretty cheap. This is not a place you want to miss if you're planning a Euro trip. And if you do go, I highly recommend renting a scooter or at least a bicycle because public transport is kind of terrible. Anyways, if you do go or you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe, like, yada, yada, yada. I'll see you guys next time. Yeah, 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 yeah,